Did you know that 30% of websites still store passwords in plain text? Hey guys, it's Kyle from Gravity here. Thank you for tuning in to another video. Today, we are going to look at how to store passwords securely in Node.js. Now, you may be surprised or not surprised to learn that around 30% of websites are storing passwords in plain text. Even scarier is a lot of websites and developers encrypt passwords using two-way encryption uh, because they think this is the secure way to do it. Uh, but this is actually wrong and we're going to look at, at, at why this is wrong in today's tutorial and then we'll look at how we can store passwords securely using one-way hashing. So for today's tutorial I've got a very simple API set up with two endpoints. All we're going to do today is create a new user and then log the user in. If you check out my previous tutorial on how to create an API, um, if you want to learn a little bit more about how I set up my API. Then I've also set up a controller file which is going to handle our incoming requests. Again, if you check my previous video, um, I did one last week on understanding model view controller in Node.js. So if this looks a little bit strange to you, check that out and that will uh, give you a bit of a head start on how this project is set up. Inside my controller, all I am doing is creating a new user and then sending a response back to the client. Inside my model then, I'm simply going to add an ID and then insert that data into the database. So over on the right hand side here, I've got Postman window open and I'm going to post an email and a password to the server. Um, and we're just going to store this as plain text as an example of how to do this extremely badly. So this is what a lot of people do. Um, they simply just take the password and then they store it into the database. Now, hopefully you understand what's wrong with this, that if, if your database gets stolen or someone gets access to your database, they're gonna be able to extract all of those email addresses and those passwords. And this is typically what happens in big data breaches. If you're familiar with the site, Have I Been Owned? Um, you can put in your email address and you can see um, if any of your passwords associated with that email address have been leaked. So this is very bad. Please, please do not do this. Now, what some other developers tend to do is um, they use an encryption library, like the crypto library that comes with Node, and then they encrypt the password using two-way encryption, or they use a function like uh, the AES encrypt in the Maya that comes with the MySQL database. Now, the problem with this is, first of all, with the AES encryption, is the database will actually encrypt the encrypt and decrypt the password in the database and then send the plain text password back to your application. So if someone um, has managed, to, if someone manages to extract the password from that connection, they're gonna get the plain text password. So you always want to be doing the encryption in the application layer. The other problem with two-way encryption is if your encryption key gets stolen, and somebody gets access to your database. So for example, if somebody broke into your AWS account, it's extremely likely that they're gonna be able to get both your database credentials and your encryption key. So then they can take all the encrypted passwords from the database, use the encryption key to decrypt them. And of course that is very bad. So let's look at how we should handle this properly in a real application. Okay, here's one I've made earlier. I've modified my user model, and this time I'm gonna use bcrypt to hash the password before we store it in the database. The way a hash works is it's a one-way encryption. So once the password has been hashed, we cannot reverse it back into its plain text. So even if the password gets stolen, um, it's, it's not possible to figure out the plain text password from that. There, there are ways that, that it can be done if the password is quite weak, but typically the hash password is gonna be much more secure than an encryption, encrypted password or obviously a plain text password. For this, I'm using a library called bcrypt, which you can get for free on NPM. 
And then the first thing I do here is I generate a, a 10 character salt. This is basically a random string that is 10 characters long. And then we add this onto the passport before we hash it for an extra layer of security. Then on the next line, we're basically just changing the password on the data object that we pass from the controller. And then we're using the bcrypt hash function passing it in the password as the first parameter and then passing it in the salt as the second parameter and then we will save that information to the database so let me go ahead and just post this through and let's take a look so you can see now that we've got the password stored as a hash um, it's just a random string that makes no sense and this can never be reversed back into the plain text password. So your next question then is likely, well, how do I actually log the user back into the application and test that the password that they've sent matches this password? So I've added in a verify method to my controller, and this is simply gonna call the user model and a method called verify, pass it in the email and password, and then we'll use that to check if the password is correct for that email address. So let's jump over to the model. In the model, I'm simply going to extract um, that user from the database uh, where it matches the email address that we're, we're passing through. Now, what you would do with the plain text password is just have an if statement that checks if the password matches the password stored in the database, um, which is what I've done here. But as you're about to see, obviously this is not going to work. Great, so it hasn't worked because we're trying to match a plain text password against a hashed password. So in order to do this properly, we can actually make use of another method of the bcrypt library to compare the, the hashed password with the password that we're sending through. So this time we're gonna use the compare method. We're passing through user.password, which is our plain text password. And then we're passing through the, the hash that we've got from the database and bcrypt will hash the first password that we're passing through. And then what it will do is, compa is compare that hash with the hash stored in the database. And if the two hashes match, that means the passwords are the same and the user will be authenticated. So when I click send here, there we go, the user is verified. So this is not very complicated. This is very simple. As you can see, we've only used three lines of code and the bcrypt library in order to do this. Um, so there really is no excuse for using plain text passwords or encrypted passwords. Like this. If you're gonna store passwords in your database, this is the most secure way of doing it. And hopefully that has removed a little bit of the complexity of hashing and storing hashed passwords in your database. If you wanted to take this a step further, and make your passwords even more secure is that you would force the user to use a secure password. Um, so you'd want to make sure that the password is at least eight characters long. You also want to maybe force them to use um, symbols or special characters in their, their passwords. Because as I mentioned at the start, there are ways to crack um, hash passwords using tools like a rainbow table. So if the user has chosen a very poor password like password one two three um, and then that gets hashed and stored in your database a rainbow table basically has millions of versions of common passwords um, that have then been hashed um, so you can actually check the hash against the hash in a rainbow table um, to see if that to see if that password is in there so by um, forcing the user to use a strong password um, you can increase that um, extra layer you can add that extra layer of security um, so that the passwords can't um, be cracked in the very unfortunate event that someone does get access to your database and is able to take all those hashes so folks, I hope that was useful. Um, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. If there's anything you want me to talk about in a future video, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you like covered and I'd be happy to do that in a future tutorial. Awesome, thank you very much for tuning in.